Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Vasudeva Sutandevam Kamsachadu Ramardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishna Vande Jagadgurum Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jodargamaya Pratyorama Vritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us offer our salutations to Lord Krishna, the son of Vasudeva Devaki, who was the bliss of Devaki, the spiritual preceptor of the universe. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been studying Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 2, The Yoga of Wisdom. Here, Sri Krishna clearly explains to Arjun that the soul is immortal. There is no death for the soul. It is only for the body. And he teaches him the philosophy of the self. And he explains the characteristics of a person of steady wisdom. We are studying verse number 57. Yes, Sarvatra Nabhisne has tattat prapishuba shubham Nabhidandati nadveshti tassiprajna padishtita. Who is said to be person of steady wisdom? He is unattached in all situations. He never becomes jubilant. Uh, never hates on gaining that which is the agreeable and disagreeable. His knowledge is well established. That means a man of steady wisdom is not shaken by any situation. In fact, why we are seeing so much of disharmony in the creation. It is not difficult to find out the reason. We are constantly being pulled vigorously by desire, anger, greed, delusion, egoism and jealousy. So, when these are there, it's very difficult to make the mind steady. In order to go towards God, in order to realize the truth, one has to come out of this prison house of Kamakrodha Loba Muhammadha Matsariya. We are caged in this. An ordinary person he is attached to his family, relations, friends, properties and pleasures. He is so much attached, he is drowned in these attachments because he is driven by his likes and dislikes. He constantly reacts to what appears present as also what appears unpleasant to his mind. That means 
his mind is continuously reacting this way or that way so when the mind is reacting vigorously how can you meditate how can you withdraw the mind from wandering the joy seeing and feeling sad are the normal responses of a person in the day to day living unless he is thoughtful and determined he cannot get rid of sufferings so the money the sage who has described in this verse is a contemplative person he is a person who knows the self here the two words are used in this verse sneha abhisneha sneha means affection abhisneha means attachment what starts as an affection slowly transforms into attachment affection degenerates into attachment attachment is oppressive why it compels the person to possess and protect the object to which he is attached it is a stumbling block for the seeker of spiritual truth so the wise person keeps free of all attachment he may have affection but never attachment it is possible to retain in the affection level provided you are steady in your discrimination in every life agreeable and disagreeable situations keep cropping up constantly attachment and aversion cause a person to react to these situations to hate something which is disagreeable if he refuses to face the reality this is the nature of all life on this planet for the sage who is established in study wisdom good and bad have ceased to exist there is no such thing as described object as desirable and the object that is undesirable for him he has no attachment to anything that means his mind is perfectly under his control he is totally non reactive he may act but he never reacts he is always in a state of equanimity he accepts everything that happens to him and he transcends the dualities one who remains the same in the midst of both present and unpleasant situations he is well established in knowledge this knowledge is a result of clarity between what is real and what is not yada sambharate chayam kurmangani va sarvashah 
ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾರ್ಥೇಭ್ಯ ತಸ್ಯ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಟಾಟಾಯ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೈಡ್ಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಿತ್ ಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ the five sense organs function like antenna and receive signals from the objects of the world the mind operating through these sense organs responds to these signals it homes on to the objects radiating these signals captures and brings them inside this is how knowledge of the external world gets into the human mind senses constantly feed on the objects of this world and become mischievous they take delight in enticing you into sensual pleasures and weakening you a little taste of sensual enjoyment sharpens your craving for it and you become a slave to enjoyment you cannot do without it that's why people we see become mad because of this madness for pleasures they commit all sorts of crimes and violence and commit heinous sins senses by themselves don't force you into any foolish act the problem comes only when the mind decides to collaborate with them the senses bring the information and then your mind entices you to go for whatever the senses dangle provocatively before you the person who does not go by what his senses show him but goes only by what is right is a wise person neither the senses nor the mind either singly or in collaboration with one another can tempt this sthita prajna the man of study wisdom he never allows himself to become a prey to their wiles a person may have knowledge a person may have knowledge but for this knowledge to become study he should be able to withdraw his senses from their objects at will that is the meaning of meditation what do you do in meditation the process is you must withdraw all the senses from outgoing and bring them inward focus it on the object of meditation so that is possible only when you are strong if you are weak and sick you can't control anything on the other hand you will be controlled by the erratic mind so the sita prajna the man of study wisdom withdraws his senses from their objects in the same manner that a tortoise withdraws its limbs if it comes to no slight test provocation it withdraws its limbs into its shell whenever it senses danger having withdrawn its limbs what does it do it lies motionless giving the impression to its enemies that it is an inert and uninteresting object 
the man of study wisdom also, sensing danger similarly in all objects of enjoyment, withdraws his senses from them and remains immune to their attractions. This wise person will then be able to gain the Jnana Nishtha, which is the steadiness and certainty in the knowledge of the Self. At least you must know what is what. Then, even if you fail, you will get the time that you accept the cause of failure and pursue the effort with more vigor. But it is very important that a person seeking the spiritual truth must be ever, ever alert. You don't know when the mind deceives you. And there is a famous episode. A Rishi, his name Saurabh Rishi, great Rishi indeed. He could meditate, controlling his breath under the water. He could remain there for long hours. He was doing that. He was feeling great joy and he was steady to a certain extent. While he was meditating in this way, some certain day, somehow he saw the fish playing each other. The person who was meditating so strongly, intensely, for long, for years, just at that moment he relaxed a little bit, probably a quarter second, seeing the enjoyment of the fishes, finished. He could not control himself. He wanted to see how that enjoyment would be. He got up from meditation. He went to the king. Story goes, he marries the daughters of the king, so on and so forth. Finally, of course, he becomes repentant and renounces everything. But it is a very painful journey. But he did renounce finally. All the powers he acquired because of his long meditation were totally destroyed because of his involvement in the pleasures with the ladies of the king whom he married. Well, thus the example given you don't know when the mind will deceive you. So we have to be alert, humble, free from boastfulness, free from anger, fear, completely surrendering oneself to the Divine. Until you realize the truth, you should not relax yourself. That means you must have control over the mind all the time. That's the meaning. Verse number 59. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinaha rasavarjam rasopyasya parandrishtva nivartate. 
For one who does not feed the senses, who is self-controlled, the senses come back to oneself. But the taste lingers. But this taste also ceases after having the vision of Brahman. Once you realize that absolute reality, there's a final result. You won't be tempted by any senses. The secret is revealed. Then there's nothing more to deceive you. Ordinary persons keep on feed their senses with their sense objects. From morning to night, what do we do? We do the same thing, engaging senses in various sense objects. Most of the people do not even know that they are allowing their senses to feed on their objects. And they can restrict them from doing so. That they don't know. They do not also know that it is not good to give such unbridled freedom to the senses. Therefore, they do not care to make even a notional attempt to withdraw the senses from their objects. Immediately they act upon. Desire comes, they jump, satisfy the desire. Anger comes, jump, do something. Like that. Always jumping and jumping like monkey. That's how the world is going on. It goes on like this only. It goes on like this only. How many wars have been waged in this world from the creation? Since the creation, you can't count them. But did the people learn the lesson? Still the wars are going on. And they do go in future also. As I said earlier, Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. These are the main causes for all the troubles, sufferings in this world. Realizing how dangerous and mischievous the senses are, what does the man of spiritual seeker does? He practices seriously rigorous self-control. He withdraws the freedom from the senses to contact their objects at will. This control is known as to give up sensual pleasures completely. But he can't get rid of the taste for those pleasures. The taste for those very pleasures still lingers in his mind. That memory will be there. Sometimes that memory bothers a person. One after the other hurdle. For example, obese persons frequently have serious intentions of giving up rich and tasty food and embark on a program of strict diet. Once the diet program is over, they begin to dig into food with renewed vigor and become even more obese than before. It is not a fiction, it is true. I heard a case, a person was uh, feeling very dull and inactive, feeling very bad about himself because of overweight. He began to hate himself. Somebody suggested, 
why don't you consult proper doctor why don't you take proper treatment so some wise friends told him why not you go naturopathy there are so many varieties of uh, health options finally he was he was made to go to admit himself in fact i have seen that uh, jindal naturopathy very famous in bangalore once the person is admitted there it is full responsibility of the people in the naturopathy they take care of everything nobody should interfere in terms of food in terms of anything and they strictly follow and monitor the health of the person admitted very strictly amazingly this overweight person reduces his weight face was shining he was looking good feeling interest in life everything okay then after the treatment is over for about 6 months or so the family people came and they were very happy to see how miraculously the person has revived his health he was looking young energetic but then what happened within a month slowly he began to taste the joy of eating more and more more and more more and more again he became overweight person so in fact the naturopathic doctor told please follow strictly whatever the diet chart we have given follow this otherwise you will again gain the weight but he has no control the family people also began to with affection i should say attachment began to feed more and more finished so it is true as long as the vasanas there is tendencies for enjoyment exist internally abstinence is always tentative it is never final how can you withdraw from the taste normally vishya means the sense objects but in the present context vishya means the sense themselves the gyani man of knowledge does not feed these senses which means that he does not pursue sense objects these sense organs belong to a person who denies himself the sensual pleasures he does not feed the sense organs this self controlled person is a dehi who is alive in the physical body rasa is a sense and is commonly used to mean raga or liking anything pleasing to you is a raga or rasa which is a value an emotional value that remains in the mind even after withdrawing the sense organs from their objects the rasa goes away only after gaining the self knowledge thus in the beginning the will is used to keep the senses under control this is a tentative control full and total control is accomplished only after the advent of knowledge drishtva means having seen here it is used to mean knowing 
what is to be known is I am the Brahman I am the supreme reality there is no difference between the Jiva and the Brahman in the wake of this knowledge the rasa goes away without this knowledge the elimination of rasa is not possible that's why you find in the ultimate realization the embodied being getting rid of his embodied state merges in the universal reality the individual soul becomes part and parcel he realizes entity with the absolute and there is a climax that's why such a person is ever blissful and cheerful suppose that person has to come again into this earth plane he has to create the mind and come yatato hyapi kaunteya purushasya vipaschitah indriyani pramathini haranti prasabam manaha verse number 60 arjun indeed the powerful senses take away forcibly the mind of even the person who is striving and who has discrimination and therefore has a clear vision of his goal the sthita prajna is a person of steady knowledge to become a sthita prajna it is imperative to master one's senses and mind only when the senses are with the person meaning under his control can steadiness in self knowledge be accomplished a viveki is a person of sharp discrimination he has a clear vision of what he wants he wants to become a man of study wisdom he wants to make his knowledge study he knows that this is possible only when the senses and the mind are under his control generally the senses are wild and unruly it is not easy to discipline them senses take delight in constantly enticing you into sensual enjoyment and weakening you the viveki knows very well how dangerous and mischievous the senses are therefore he makes very sincere efforts to master his senses he practices controlling of senses both internal and external in time he succeeds he becomes adept at using his will in withdrawing the senses from their objects which means he stops feeding them thus he achieves a certain mastery over his senses and his mind this control however is tentative the mind of this viveki who mastered his senses is still not very steady although it is better than the mind of an ordinary person whose vision is not so clear and who does not make similar efforts to master his senses the mind of the viveki that is a man of discrimination still flutters when all the senses dangle tantalizingly the sense objects before him this got temptations the man who is controlling his senses must be very careful about temptations instances of viveki succumbing to the wiles of their senses are many the reason for this is that the taste for the sense object still lingers in his mind with the taste for the sense object still lingering the person may deliver himself into the hands of his senses at an unguarded moment the taste would only be wiped out totally when the self knowledge takes place that's why lord krishna teaches us very important uh, teaching in the gita sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara by constantly thinking of the lord what happens the mind cannot go this way that way because you are aware and you should be aware 
every moment the mind goes this way immediately bring it put it on the right track repeat the name of god that is one of the methods how to keep the mind engaged engaging the mind is very essential either you must be active externally in actions or you must think positive ideas in the mind keeping the mind internally active idleness should not be allowed into the mind idle mind is devil's workshop they say they imagine all sorts of things in fact many people they make schemes on the count of idleness conspiracies all these things are done anyway generally mind goes to lower level if it is kept idle it's so always better to keep the mind active either way either externally or internally verse number 61 tani sarvani samyamya yukta asita mat paraha vashehi yasyendriyani tasya pragya pratishthita therefore let that person who has discrimination keeping under his control all those sense organs sit in contemplation on me because for that person whose sense organs are under his control his knowledge becomes well established the viveki has discrimination he has a clear vision of his ultimate goal His ultimate goal is moksha. Moksha is self-knowledge. Knowledge unfolds in a purified mind. When a person inquires into the nature of the self, a person who has no idea of what is Atma cannot obviously contemplate on Atma. The Viveki who understands what is Atma and what is Anatma has some knowledge of the Atma. The Lord says, that for gaining a steady self knowledge the viveki man of discrimination should withdraw his senses and sit in contemplation on the self which is the atma that is meditation is important should be done but you must know the process and do it properly he should contemplate on the self which is the atma which is the satchidananda which is the ishvara who is awareness who is limitless and who is actionless who is sakshi the witness atma should be recognized in all possible ways thus when contemplated in this way the rasa the taste vanishes when the rasa goes the knowledge becomes well established tasya pragya pradishtita so it depends upon how we engage ourselves in spiritual thoughts how we engage ourselves in spiritual activities how we engage ourselves in purification of the heart and this is the way that we should adopt every day not only weekends spiritual practice must be done every day coming to ashram itself i consider as a spiritual practice they give thousand reasons just if i ask one line they give ten lines statement one line i ask you could not come yesterday immediately they open up their mouth ten lines they will say ten any what to be done we have to be sympathetic but spirituality 
is to be achieved through rigorous intense whole hearted practice you have to do it everything it takes time definitely it takes time let it take time no hurry let us stop here chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within own name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power recites no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in his empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o oh, my mind be humble than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant and ceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the ties of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet oh how i long for the day when the instant separation from the old lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still hast the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from then real to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all the joys everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be at all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour in in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the restorer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied